the first plenary session on enhancing academia industry interaction started in the morning at 9 hours on January 4 2011 Dr Chidambaram presided over the function 12 panelists constituted the who's who of scientific world in India This is not only as I said a large industry small industry next slide medium and small enterprises here kaifac of dst is looking at what we call technologically homogeneous clusters probably 80 such clusters in india these are all people who have lot of innovative ideas know how to go with these ideas so what kaifac is doing is to select approximate academic institution and find out how to incubate the ideas these people have provide them consultancy provide them design help Dr. Rama Rao citing the example of automotive sector emphasized the need for an innovation ecosystem. We believe that that a new R&D in transportation research is something which we have to adapt. Number of R&D labs are there that can be the BRD, OTSP, autonomous labs, EBG and CSIR for other things. But we don't have anything comparable to what we have in those agencies uh, in the automotive sector. If you look at what is, uh, what is uh, uh, gaining the rest of the world, there's something like more than 120 centers around the world uh, focusing on transportation science, engineering and technology. So we need to create one. It's also in the direction of uh, improving HR. All the participants, without exception, voted for public-private partnership. Dr. Brahmachari's message was loud and clear. Get out of the way of entrepreneurs. The day was special in the sense that four Nobel Prize winners delivered public lectures. Dr. Amritya Sen, in his Nobel Quest lecture, discussed the role and ambience of Nalanda University, which perhaps is the oldest university established anywhere in the world. Nalanda was violently destroyed in an Afghan attack led by the ruthless conqueror, conqueror Bakhtiar Khilji in 1193. That is shortly after the beginning of Oxford University and shortly before the initiation of Cambridge University. So Nalanda University, an internationally renowned center of higher education in India, which was established in the early 5th century, was ending its continuous existence of more than 700 years as Oxford and Cambridge were being newly founded. Professor Martin Cliffy on molecular biophysics, particularly the green fluorescent protein, gave a fascinating lecture. But as we were finding these genes, the very first question we wanted to ask was, where is the gene active? Now, I should also say, why were we interested in understanding the sense of touch? And we know what those molecules, the proteins are in cells that allow us to sense those chemical signals. But we have a whole series of senses that are the mechanical senses, senses that are driven because cells are pushed around, like our sense of touch, like our sense of hearing. All of these senses, though, have one thing in common, these mechanical senses. Biologists, scientists have absolutely no idea how they work. Professor Venkata Raman Ramakrishnan elucidated on the mechanism of antibiotics and the molecular structure of ribosomes. We have resistant bacteria, so we always have to stay ahead of the game, and we need to develop uh, new antibiotics. And that again is multiply, has many aspects to it. We need uh, to understand micro microbial pathogenesis. We need to understand how bacteria are uh, actually uh, why certain bacteria are virulent, what is the cause of virulence, and how they interact with the host. And that will give us more targets uh, to uh, kill off bacteria. 
And then we need to have better diagnostics that will also help with surveillance. We can have, try and develop better vaccines as a preventive measure. And finally, uh, with structures like the ribosome, you can develop new drugs and novel therapies uh, for bacteria. He also interacted with children in a special session. Dr. Thomas Stites discussed the central dogma in molecular biology, namely the DNA producing RNA and RNA in turn producing proteins. What we found is the CCA is interacting with part of the ribosome RNA here, positioning the peptide, the peptide group, and here's the CCA interacting with the uh, RNA on the ribosome with the amino acid to attack it. One among many highlights of the day was the first National Science Film Festival that was inaugurated at the venue. This era has been the era of visuals. Look at all around. Things that are uh, invisible we are making signages, okay? Thoughts, I mean, uh, 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 let's say even uh, for love, we have a symbol, okay? So, it, we are now representing it by a visual. The audiovisual medium as it has evolved has had significant technical breakthroughs. And the products that you see today are so much more sophisticated, so much lighter, so much more flexible, so much more available for manipulation than what was there just 15 years back or 30 years back. So actually, here's one facet of an activity, a human endeavor, which has really benefited from the developments in technology. And you're going to take advantage of it every day, whether it's animations, graphics, editing, sound recording, and whatever you do to actually make a product which is very, very far superior. Any film festival cannot be a successful film festival unless and until a large number of films are created in the country. We know that the number of films that are being made in the country in the name of science or in the realm of science is very, very small. It's unfortunate that documentary somehow got very, very delayed as a genre in the country. It's a very difficult area. First, you have to understand film, then you have to understand documentary, and then you have to be clear about science. So it's not an easy thing to do.